Windows Sandbox is an isolated, dynamic, ephemeral, lightweight, container-based virtual machine desktop environment. Since the Sandbox is temporary and non-persistent, once it is closed, all installed applications, files, and settings are permanently deleted. Each time Windows Sandbox is launched, a new, pristine desktop environment is generated. And the ephemeral nature of the Windows Sandbox makes it a perfect, safe environment to test unknown and possibly dangerous software and investigate questionable websites. Run Windows Sandbox, you must have Windows 10 or Windows 11, Professional, Education, or Enterprise. Windows Home is not supported, however. Since Windows Sandbox is based on virtualization and container technology, virtualization capabilities must be enabled in the BIOS for UEFI. Nested virtualization must be enabled if using Windows Sandbox and a virtual machine guest. An AMD Intel 64-bit processor for both Windows 10 and Windows 11, or an ARM 64 processor for Windows 11, 22H2, and later. At least 4 gigs of RAM with 8 gigs or greater recommended. At least 1 gigabyte of free disk space. And at least 2 CPU cores with 4 or more recommended. To enable Windows Sandbox, click Start and type Turn Windows Features On or Off to open the Windows Features dialog box. Scroll down and check the Windows Sandbox checkbox and click OK. Restart when prompted. To enable Windows Sandbox, Using PowerShell, open an administrative PowerShell session or terminal and run the Enable Windows Optional Feature commandlet. Hit Y or Enter to restart when prompted. To run, click Start and type Windows Sandbox. To run from a PowerShell session or terminal, type Windows Sandbox. The Sandbox can take as little as 10 seconds to launch and be ready for use. By default, the Windows Sandbox will have 4 GB of RAM, an 80 GB virtual disk for Windows 11 24H2, a 40 GB virtual disk for Windows 11 23H2 and earlier. The same number of vCPU as the host, network access that's provided by the host via network address translation, a virtual GPU enabled with a compatible supported graphics card, and the ability to cut and paste files between the host and the sandbox. The Windows Sandbox will always be Windows Enterprise, regardless of the host. You can resize the Sandbox window or run it in full screen. You can restart the Windows Sandbox from within and the state, settings, and files will remain intact. However, the sandbox is destroyed and discarded once you close the sandbox by either signing out the user, clicking shut down, clicking disconnect, closing the sandbox window, by logging out the host computer or by restarting the host computer.
Some aspects of Windows Sandbox can be customized using a simple XML-based configuration file with a WSB file extension. The configuration file allows the user to control the following aspects of Windows Sandbox. The highlighted settings are enabled by default. In this example, I'm setting the memory to 32 gigabytes and mapping a couple of folders to be shared between the host and the sandbox. To run Windows Sandbox using a configuration file, just execute the .wsb file. We can verify some of our settings, such as memory, via Task Manager within the Sandbox. Using Edge, you can download an application or an installer to install an application. In this example, I am downloading the Blender installer. Once Blender is installed, I can run it using the desktop or start menu shortcuts. <laughs> Oops, I have to install the 2015-2022 Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable prerequisite. Now, Blender runs normally. You can copy an application or installer from the host, paste it into the Windows Sandbox, and execute it normally. For this example, I am copying and pasting the Audacity installer. Once installed, Audacity runs normally and can record via remote pass-through audio. Audacity runs normally and can record via remote pass-through audio. You can run an application or an installer from a host map folder. The sandbox folder C Users WDAG Utility Account Downloads Host Downloads is mapped to the host folder C Users Professor Downloads or Windows Sandbox. From this location, I'm going to install LibreOffice. And as before, once installed, LibreOffice runs normally. Not unexpected, there are some limitations to the Windows Sandbox. You can only run one instance of the Windows Sandbox at any one time. Currently, it cannot run any of the applications provided by the Windows Store, such as Calculator or Mail. <laughs> Go figure. Since there's a single user named WDAG Utility Account that has full administrative rights, it can be difficult, but not impossible, to test scenarios with a standard account or trying to test multiple user scenarios. Windows optional features cannot be installed. Therefore, legacy applications that require .NET 3.51 or earlier will not install or run. Some applications will not properly install. Some applications will successfully install, but will not run. If you lock the sandbox, the screen goes black, effectively breaking the sandbox and requiring it to be closed, resulting in that instance's destruction. As mentioned earlier, once the sandbox is closed, its state, settings, and files are permanently discarded. Although the lightweight nature of Windows Sandbox makes it suitable for certain test scenarios, it lacks some key capabilities that a full virtual machine provides. However, Windows Sandbox is a great complement to full virtual machines and can be enabled and used alongside dedicated hypervisors such as Hyper-V, VMware Workstation, or Oracle VirtualBox. By the way, this VirtualBox instance is running 
inside a Hyper-V virtual machine. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.